humans, aliens, star family, whoever you are, wherever you are. Hello, my name is Morgana. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I am a creative medium and intuitive tarot reader. I've been reading tarot for over five years now. I use tarot as a beautiful and sacred tool for self-growth, for healing, for reflection, introspection, for divine insight, for connecting to my higher self, and for connecting to spirit. My intention for every single reading that I do, whether it is more so geared towards the collective, kind of like this, pick a card reading, or a one-on-one -on -one with just me and you. <laughs> My intention is for you to feel closer to yourself, to feel connected to spirit and or your higher self, and empowered to live your best and most authentic life. Let's see what spirit has in store for us today. This is a pick a card style reading, so I have three piles to choose from. I have pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. Pile number one is the Shadowscape Tarot. Pile number two is the Children of Lytha Tarot. Pile number three is the Osho Zen Tarot. And my intention with all three of these readings, whichever one you pick, is to dive deep into what is coming up for you during summer's end, during Samhain, during Halloween. It is a six card tarot spread. I have not been able to find the creator of the spread, but I'm going to try really hard so I can give them credit. Um, I found it just searching through Pinterest for different spreads. Um, sometimes I use spreads um, more so geared towards holidays or specific events, and then most of the time I pull intuitively. Um, but I found this spread and I really connected with it, and I've been using it within a lot of my personal readings. Um, so it is again a six card tarot spread, um, and I will take you through each of the placements and the meanings within them. Um, but it is a spread to reflect what's going on underneath, going into the underworld, your underworld, bringing it up into the upper world. Um, things to embrace, things to let go of, your strengths, your fears, some things to contemplate, and also things to celebrate nearing the end of summer, you know? So if that sounds like something you want to dive into, feel free to look in the description and skip ahead to the specific um, time slot um, geared towards whichever pile that you chose. So take a deep breath and let's fucking get into this. <laughs> Hello, you chose pile number one, the first pile. I'm so excited to get into this with you. So go ahead, take a deep breath. And let's dive in. Hello to those who chose pile number one. I'm not sure if I mentioned it within the little intro to the pile you chose, but I am using the Shadowscape Tarot. I am also using a few different oracle decks and all of the decks that I use will be listed within the description of this video. So let's dive into this reading. I actually had to take a moment after I pulled the spread because it hit me really hard. <laughs> um, so if you haven't already, go ahead and take a deep breath. Um, this is a pick a card reading geared towards the collective, so take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But right off the bat, when I look at the spread, I feel 
first I felt discomfort, but then I felt like this hug. This hug where I felt lonely, this hug where I felt sad and kind of disconnected. I almost felt like this energy of this, this presence of divine love just overwhelming this spread, overwhelming this space, overwhelming my energy. So let's dive into it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take you through the position and the placements and all of that goodness. Because again, this is a spread geared towards Samhain. What to embrace? We have the Six of Cups in the position of life. In the position of death, what to let go of, we have the hanged man. In the position of your courage, your strengths, we have the sun. In the position of your fears, we have the three of wands. In the position of something to celebrate. And I think this is a really big thing to celebrate. We have the empress. Lastly, within the tarot spread, we have the position of contemplation, something to contemplate. We have the Page of Swords, which is honestly one of the most perfect cards to come up in a contemplation position. Oracle cards that I pulled, we have Anima Mundi, Anima Mundi, I'm not sure to how. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but I really, really like this card. Again, all of the cards that I'm using will be listed in the description of this video. Next, we have the elephant. Greatness. Love is your strength. Leadership is your path. Your wisdom inspires everyone you meet. You can overcome any problem. You will naturally and easily achieve success. Next, we have Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, Seeding the Light, Laying Foundations, Divine Plan. So beautiful. Ties beautifully into that Empress card, actually. Lastly, we have Surfacing, which when, this was when I kind of had to take a step back because I went so deep into this spread so fast before I even was able to articulate it, which is now me articulating. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have surfacing, which connects to Six of Cups. I'm going to go ahead and dive right on in. So again, in that position of life, what to embrace, we have the Six of Cups. Something you can embrace right now in your life is how far you've come. Um, because as soon as I laid out these cards, I saw this story in my head of someone who has done a, a lot of exploring. Not necessarily exploring outside of themselves, but exploring the inside. <laughs> Like, I, I almost see you exploring, like, different memories, exploring different experiences within your childhood, kind of going on this emotional journey, this emotional exploration. So that could be tied to inner child work, that could be tied to reparenting yourself, that could be tied to a plethora of different things. But the Six of Cups as something to embrace is a beautiful thing because even I'm picking up on the not so great things that happened within your childhood, the things that brought you a lot of pain, that brought you a lot of things that you're having to unpack now that sometimes meet you with not a lot of grace. <laughs> Um, that come up for you in ways that sometimes it's even hard to explain. But I see within this spread your journey to being able to explain. Exploring those emotions, exploring even things you, you hadn't even tapped into within your childhood. Things you hadn't even thought or considered. 
Um, and then moving into like embracing the fact that I almost even just see you embracing your innocence and embracing your wholeness even through any any and all of the the things you've been unpacking any and all of the things that you've been experiencing and going through um this could be you being in therapy this could be you doing the work on your own this could be you this could even be like more of that invitation to um explore those memories explore your inner child explore and let them let them come forward and explore and like hold hands with you and just let them have this outlet to experience life outside of what you were tied to but being in this position of embracing your wholeness embracing your oneness embracing your your connection to your inner child your connection to your divine self is so beautiful and that comes from a place again of work um, i see a lot of work within this spread and when i when i say work i'm talking about so much contemplation navigating through so much pain really putting intention and focus on the areas that keep coming up for you have repetitively come up for you um, within this season specifically like this is towards Samhain so coming up to the summer's end um, memories that have resurfaced I just see you putting in time and intention into exploring different perspectives exploring emotions that necessarily hadn't ever been tapped into before exploring emotions that have repetitive repetitively come up for you throughout your life and you're starting to see them and feel them in a different way in a broader way you're starting to be more gentle with yourself you're starting to feel more connected to the parts of you that you kind of shut away specifically parts of you tied to like your child and your inner child and then moving down into the position of death we have the hanged man or the hanged one and i see this this thing you starting to let go of feeling stuck with these emotions that come up you moving and navigating through the sticky stuff the stuff that those memories that come up those those feelings that come up that are tied to those memories this could even be you letting go of one specific thing that happened and when i say letting go i'm not meaning like completely forgetting and moving on it's exploring that thing that kept coming up exploring this experience exploring what it did to you how it shaped you accepting it that it's a part of your story not letting it control you not letting it keep you from progressing from growing from changing not keeping you stuck i just see you really embracing and letting go of a lot of things tied to not being able to express yourself um, expression within your connection to your inner child like i almost see you letting go the need to hold on to things so tightly um, that's kind of why i was picking up on like you doing the work or you starting to talk about these things articulate these things articulate these memories um maybe that's you meeting these memories or these things coming up for you from a different perspective from the journey you're on or it's expressing these things with someone else and getting another perspective on these situations so that you're able to move through them and not feel stuck within them not feel like you this can also be um the hanged man tied into the six of cups what i'm getting is something that you're able to start to let go of 
um, is feeling trapped within a memory, of feeling stuck within a memory, of feeling like you can't move on from a memory, feeling like you have to... The, like this memory keeps you in a cage um, and the hanged man is like aching to be released but this energy can't be released without it first being acknowledged and that's however that looks like for you um, I'm definitely going to put a a little trigger warning um, within the spread just because I know talking about deep inner child work and memories resurfacing can be triggering, can can meet you in a place where you don't want to go right now. So I'm just articulating this so that I can put that um, within the spread um, before you dive into this. And I don't want to ever take you into a place where you are not ready to go. Anyway, moving into we have your courage. We have the sun. The sun is such a beautiful card to have as your strength, to have as your actual pillar of light. And the sun is your ability to... I just see your confidence. I see your your happiness. I see your divine light, like your divine truth. I see your divinity, like in its wholeness and your connection to your higher self, your connection to spirit, your connection to taking life by the horns, like taking this shit that's come up for you and just saying, you know what? Like you, you're not exploring these things without having a purpose in mind. Like you're exploring these things and they're coming up for you because they are opportunities for growth. They are places that are aching to be healed, but first they've needed to be acknowledged as a wound or acknowledged as a place of pain. And I just see you really stepping into and embracing your confidence, embracing this light within you, that wholeness, that that pureness, that connection to your inner child. Like the inner child to me is is the sun. Um, within the traditional Rider Waite Smith deck, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there's a there's a child riding a horse, and there's a sun behind it. Um, which is beautiful and I think really captures the lightness of childhood and its and its purity, I guess. And I just really see that you are someone who has traveled a long way, who has gone to a lot of dark places, who has really overcome a lot of different things. And like you found your light. I just see that the spread is acknowledging like the pain you've navigated, like the not so great memories that have come up, even navigating childhood trauma, really. Like that's what I see within the spread. I just see you shining that light on these things. Almost what I was describing in the beginning where I felt this, that discomfort and then I felt that divine love like that hug that's how I'm experiencing you starting to meet yourself like this is you meeting those dark parts of yourself with lightness you hugging your inner child you holding your inner child's hand you you taking them on that and I, I oops <laughs> got out of talk for a second I like that this isn't a child in this deck um, the Shadowscape Terror, I like that it's looks like a young adult, but I just see you really embracing embracing your light, embracing your lightness. Moving down into the fear portion, we have the Three of Wands. Three of Wands. So I can see this as a fear coming up for you where 
could even be tied into this hanged man energy of fearing the journey that you're on um it's a journey into the unknown but the thing to acknowledge within the three of wands is that you're not thinking about the journey you're not preparing for the journey you're already on it and there's no turning back there's really no turning back from all of the growth and all of this light there's no like you turning back into this this old version of you there's no you falling back into these these cages within your mind there's there's none of that like i know that this fear card is it's it's actually interesting that this the three of wands came up in a placement of fear um and i just literally see that as fearing the journey but there's so much lightness within the spread that shows me that you've already put in so much work you've already put in so much intention and love and exploring into these things into these memories into your connection to your inner child intention and in, in taking care of yourself really that I don't see you really holding on to this fear for much longer I know that there's a lot of things coming up to where things feel very uncertain and unknown so I'm going to acknowledge that within this card too as a fear it's like you've you've come so far and it's like what do you do with this new version of yourself what do you do with this part of you what do you do with your lightness I almost even see this card I it makes me think of Lion King when they like show up to I don't remember what it's called but with in the movie when they show what's his name <laughs> the little lion <laughs> like where you don't go like where the light doesn't touch we don't go there that's the unknown um, we only go where the light touches that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this card like maybe even what's his name is his name Simba <laughs> Simba what's the dad's name y'all excuse me I'm just going on my own Lion King journey anyway I just that's what I thought of when I saw the three of wands just fearing the journey maybe fearing that you won't necessarily have this lightness to meet whatever comes up for you like you maybe like other dark things that are starting to come up or other darkness things that literally are just unknown to you fearing like you won't be able to meet it now like in your confidence that you might be sucked back into a depression or sucked back into um your own darkness or your own anxiety your own turmoil but i again i really feel like a lightness to this this card even though it's in a position of fear like it's it's something that you're able to navigate you're able to come out of a little bit easier than maybe you once were and then moving on into the empress which is one of my favorite cards and this is in the position of something to celebrate like this is the divine mother this is the divine feminine this is such a such a fucking beautiful energy to celebrate within you to say that you've really like met your inner child that you've really taken care of yourself that you've really put in effort i just see you putting in effort like moving through whether that's you've put in a lot of a lot of effort up until this point or it's you starting to put in effort like being in a place where you're letting go of feeling stuck letting go of feeling trapped and you meeting yourself with grace you meeting yourself with peace you meeting yourself with openness you meeting yourself with that that divine motherly essence of like what do you need 
how can I take care of myself? Especially if you're on your own, especially if you've, I can also see like you working through mother wound things, specifically with the Empress, this can be a celebration of like, you know what? You've really navigated a lot of things. Like you have come so far on your journey, this healing journey, you've really like, this hug I keep experiencing, this feeling of divine love like pouring into my space and into my my awareness is just aching to be acknowledged by you because that's your energy that I'm picking up on. That's your light that I'm picking up on. That's your confidence. That's your wholeness. That's your innocence, innocence that I am tapping into. And remember that whatever comes up for you the memories that you're navigating, the, the darkness that you've had to navigate through, you're a fucking warrior. And you've I just really see you transforming within this whole spread, within this whole season, within this whole fucking year, honestly. Also, I need to stop cursing within these videos, but I can't stop. Um, I've, I've toned it down a lot, though. I've toned it down a lot. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. But anyway, I just see you celebrating your wholeness. Like, look at this card, even. How they're pointing to the circle of butterflies, pointing to wholeness, pointing to this completion. Ooh, it's even like the sun. It's making the sun pointing to where you've created your confidence where you have come beside of yourself and created things i see within this whole spread that you've been able to with <laughs> within meeting these old parts of yourself you've almost like begun to meet these new parts of yourself and there's this beautiful like symbiotic relationship with this new part of you holding the the old part of you in gentleness holding the old part of you the younger version of you with a lot more compassion and and it's it's almost like navigating to like the memories that come up where you feel whether it was you did something that was wrong or something that was wrong happened to you you're able to meet that memory and feel those feelings that come up and you're able to meet yourself with this newfound sense of compassion and grace and if that's not something you're experiencing right now, I can see that like very much coming into your scope, specifically like Samhain, summer's end, like the season coming in, coming to an end. Like there's this whole new beginning of you being able to feel this energy, you being able to embrace yourself, accept yourself for all that you've been through, through all of the different paths that life has taken you on and lastly we have that card of contemplation we have the page of swords and i can see within this this spread like the page to me is a young can be a young person or a student but i kind of just see you contemplating I see you contemplating the things that you've learned on the way, like the things, the lessons that you've learned, the, the experiences that you've had. I just see you being able to also with this page, like be a student to a different perspective. So that could be like you taking a course about something. You could be in school, you could be 
an, you could be a therapist <laughs> um, or have a therapist. I just see the Page of Swords as like you being able to be in this position of being open to different perspectives, having this lightness about you, like, oh my god, oh, I've never even noticed this in this card. I hope my phone can focus on this, but this person is holding a baby swan in their lap. I almost even see that as you. <laughs> you to you. Like, you holding your inner child, you holding your your innocence, you holding your your beautiful divine essence and just cherishing it and and saying I love you and like you wouldn't be on this journey to you wouldn't be on this journey you wouldn't be this far on your journey if you didn't have an intention to feel connected to yourself to feel whole to feel love whether that's love for yourself or love for love for others but I just really want to congratulate you and acknowledge how far you've come. Also, like, you still have a long way to go. We all fucking do. And wherever these things start to come up for you, wherever you start to feel stuck or trapped in a memory, um, remember that it's a memory Remember that you have this beautiful superpower to be able to meet yourself with presence. And if that's something that is really hard for you to do, this is an invitation to exploring avenues in which you can feel that connection. You can have a tool set to help you navigate these things, especially if you're navigating um, a lot of darkness, a lot of dark memories coming up. Um, you definitely need something or someone to help you navigate these things, to even bring different perspectives, to bring you tools, to bring you acknowledgement and really like inspire you to keep going, to, to inspire you to want to live fully to inspire you to work through these things instead of like keeping them in their cage or keeping them locked away. Um, and then we have the that surfacing card, which I, I really connected with. Um, I connected with it in terms of that six of cups, like memories starting to surface for you. Um, and then we have the Anna or Anna grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. Um, I, I kind of see and feel this energy is like that divine feminine, that divine mother. And then um, the anima mundi, anima mundi. <laughs> um, this is like your connection to all things. And I also see within this spread, like finding treasure Finding treasures within the darkness. So the Six of Cups, we can acknowledge like being on a healing journey, being on this journey of exploring your inner child and the things that you learned in your formative years, things that happened to you in your formative years um, that shaped you into the person you are, whether that was good or bad or in between. You're navigating whether it was good or bad. I just really see you, especially if you've been on this journey too, where you've been working through so much childhood trauma, so much grief, so much sorrow, so much pain on your own. Um, I just see you finding treasure and fi like almost reaping the reward of it. And that reward is feeling more connected to yourself, more confident. Um, your reward is feeling compassion for yourself and what you've gone through versus blaming yourself versus feeling like you have you're like everything happened to you because you're this way or like moving out of like a victim mentality into this 
this mentality of embracing ex and accepting everything that happened to you and wanting to heal from those things and meeting yourself with compassion and love and acknowledging any places of you that even diving deeper into the Empress, acknowledging maybe where you didn't get that um, as a child and you starting to give that to yourself now. And that is so, so beautiful. Thank you so much for tuning into this reading. I hope that it all resonated with you. Again, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If this whole pile didn't resonate with you, feel free to watch a different pile, to pick a different pile, or watch all of them, whatever you want to do. Um, but thank you so much. If you would like to connect with me more, my Facebook will be linked in the description. My Instagrams will be linked in the description. My booking information. I have transitioned into booking mostly just recorded readings. So if you're interested in a personal reading with me, um, you can find all of my booking information on my Facebook or my Instagram, or you can send me a direct message on either of those platforms. I'll also put my email down there because I know pe some people have said fuck social media, which I'm like on the verge of doing, be but also this, I need it because of my work. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, if you want to stay connected, please do. Um, also, if you could like this video, share this video, comment on this video if you resonated with it, and subscribe to my channel. I'm really excited to expand and grow and connect with more like-minded individuals. So thank you so much. I hope that you have a beautiful, beautiful Samhain, however that looks like for you, whether you're celebrating on your own or with a select few. Have a beautiful, beautiful holiday. Hello, you chose pile number two. I am going to be using the Children of Lytha Tarot. There's also a beautiful piece of amethyst on here. But yeah, I'm very excited to get into this one. So take a deep breath and let's dive in. Hello to those who chose pile number two. I am using the Children of Lytha Tarot. I really, really love this deck. I got it recently and I have really no complaints about it. I think that the cardstock is so velvety and buttery and beautiful. I think the imagery within the deck is so mystical and ethereal and magical also it's one of the more diverse decks that i have one of the more inclusive decks that i have and i'm excited to explore and build my relationship with using this deck um, this is the first time that i'm using it within a youtube video so we'll see what i pick up on we'll see what comes through I've gone ahead and laid out the cards that I'm using for the specific spread and I'm going to take you through them. Every deck that I'm using will be listed in the description of this video and yeah, let's let's get into it. So in the first position, in the position of life, we have what to embrace, the Four of Swords. In the position of death, what to let go of. We have the Nine of Swords in reverse. Your courage, your strengths. We have the Ten of Pentacles. Your fears, we have the Six of Wands in reverse. Something to celebrate right now in your life something to celebrate nearing summer's end 
nearing this season coming to an end this chapter coming to a close we have the high priestess lastly within the tarot spread we have the contemplation placement and we have something to contemplate the emperor amazing oracle cards that i pulled this one straight up flew onto the table like onto the spread like this touching the four of swords which ties into rejuvenation <laughs> um these cards are so intrinsic intrinsically beautiful <clears throat> next we have the mirror we have soul family call in your tribe you do not have to do it alone and last oracle card that i pulled we have the loon intuitive listen to the song in your soul trust your intuition as you have a way of knowing emerge from the busy life and seek more solitude recognize that you are unique and that you are loved well, let's dive in <laughs> so there's definitely a, a theme within the oracle cards and also within the tarot cards um, and that theme is rejuvenation that theme is rest that theme is everything having to do with a break just this there's a lightness surrounding that rejuvenation card that i pulled and the fact that it like fell on top of the four of swords basically was touching the four of swords also also speaks speaks has its own wisdom and we're gonna get into it so something to celebrate right now is the fact that you're able to embrace this energy you're able to feel like you're even in a place in your life that you can feel any kind of rejuvenation that you can feel any kind of rest that you can feel any kind of peace or solitude um within this position um it's life what to embrace i feel when i look at this card i feel like this is you really embracing this time of rest embracing what's come up for you in solitude embracing and intuiting listening to your emotions listening to your body listening to your mind listening to the parts of you that are telling you to rest that could even be almost forced to being forced to rest or forced to being alone forced to isolating i know that's a lot of people's experience right now um, with everything going on in the world but I just really see this as I don't see this as a bad thing I don't see you being in isolation you being lonely I see this as a card of you really really resting and really giving yourself the opportunity to rest more like when like listening to your body taking more that's could that could be coming up as taking more naps that could be coming up as you putting more time and energy into your self-care routine into your self-care even not i don't i almost even see you like creating a self-care routine within this card um whether that's taking more baths whether that's taking a walk whether that is journaling or taking a 15 minute nap after work or before work but this is just a thing to embrace and and, and say like it's absolutely okay to rest it's absolutely okay to listen to your body even when if even if you've been isolating which i'm picking up on a lot within this spread like isolating it's almost like you have so much time to yourself 
not saying that you're not working. Some of you aren't working, but those of you who are, even if you're still consumed by work, I see you being at home a lot. Um, I just see you now that you've been home a lot, like this is, you're not just now starting to be at home. I just see you starting to let yourself rest. It's like you're coming out of this period of a lot of anxiety, a lot of not being able to rest, a lot of turmoil, a lot of your mental state is always like on. Um, and I just see, really see you embracing this part of you, like where you're able to like put up boundaries that could be like putting up boundaries with your cell phone, with your TV, with, with anything that like eats up your time, like that distracts you, that keeps you up at night, that like, I even see this is for a few of you, like a specific message between the life and death positions within this spread is you embracing your dream world, embracing like a full night's rest, embracing and taking care of yourself, like setting yourself up for success within resting, within nighttime, within your restoration period. So that could be like you, again, with that self-care routine coming in, like I'm gonna put my phone away 30 minutes before bed. I'm going to put my phone on the other side of the room. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to drink a glass of water or some, some sleepy time tea. I just see this really being like, if you're not doing that now, this is like something to embrace. So like something that can really give you life, something that can really support you if you're feeling like you're not getting any rest, if you're feeling like very outside of yourself, if you're feeling very disconnected from yourself, like this is just an opportunity to really reconnect and ask yourself, what do you need? And like giving yourself that opportunity, making that thing happen for yourself. Um, and that could literally be as simple as like that phone scenario um setting yourself up for a better night's sleep um because you need that you need to be able to restore you need to be able to rejuvenate to set yourself up for a better day <laughs> really uh, and allow yourself to rest too um i see like a very specific story within this spread and I think this is for someone specific let me know if this resonates with you if you, this is something coming through and you're like yeah that that sounds like me <laughs> um I again see that like you are putting putting more energy and intention into your nighttime routine and to setting yourself up for success within the dream realm. That could be you doing more dream work because I see why I'm picking up on that. We have the nine of swords in reverse and the nine of swords is a card tied to anxiety, tied to, men tied to mental anguish and specifically nightmares. So there's like this beautiful mirror going on within this spread. It's like the upper world and the underworld where you're able to again, like set yourself up for six. I just literally keep hearing set yourself up for success within this nighttime routine. Um, especially if you're someone who is very restless, has, experiences a lot of nightmares, experiences a lot of, like this could be sleep paralysis, this could be just feeling like something's watching you, this could be paranoia, this could be feeling like you aren't safe to rest, like you, you're you just not safe, um, specifically mentally not safe, and that really affects you, that can affect your sleep. And this can also just be like you being mentally always on, like that's kind of, I was also seeing like a network, like I saw these, all of these swords as a network. Um, oops, sorry, I'm trying to focus that. 
um, as a network in terms of like your phone or devices or those things that aren't setting you up for success. They're actually hindering you and bringing you pain, bringing you harm. Um, these could also be those things that you are either aware of and you continue to do or things that you're not aware of that contribute to whoa that was a weird alarm outside i've never heard that alarm before i don't know if anybody heard that it was like whoop, 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 whoop. um this anyway this could be you um bringing awareness to where you might be consciously or really like unconsciously contributing to not being able to feel rested, not being able to feel like you're safe to rest. So that could even literally be like watching a horror movie before bed. That could be listening to some like dark ass music before bed or during the day. This could be you doing things because other people are doing them, doing things um, that keep you on a lower vibration, eating really bad food, like things that literally like eat at you um, and don't set you up for success at night. Like you never feel restored. You never feel rested. You never feel the sense of like rejuvenation. It's like you wake up and rinse and fucking repeat this feeling of always being tired, like always feeling bad not like not only physically but mentally um so i just see this as something you're able to bring awareness to because you're able to start to let go of this energy now um because this is in that placement of death what to let go of um being able to let go of at least one of those things that is hindering you from being able to rest hindering you from being able to feel any sort of rejuvenation, to feel any sort of happiness, to feel any sort of anything positive, because I see like, it's, it's not even just one thing that you're doing that is not setting you up for success. Like there's a lot of different things and it's acknowledging those things and starting to bring awareness to those places where it's like, you know, why am I always experiencing X, Y, and Z? Why am I always experiencing like these feelings coming up to me, coming up for me? I almost feel like a lot of things, it's like a buildup during the day. Like you never feel rested, but then like nearing the end of the day, there's this energy of feeling like very sick, even like drained, like very tired, but not able to sleep, very restless. Um, like you starting to bring awareness to your routine. Like I see a routine within the spread, like that you are either cultivating like more positive things that can benefit you um, and, and support you rather than bring you down, like things that raise your vibration rather than lower it and keep you like in this cage or keep you like in this cycle of feeling, um, feeling sick or feeling not even just like physically sick, but mentally unwell. Like, and that could be coming through as like nightmares coming up for you. I hope that that is resonating with a couple of you. Um, it's definitely something that I resonate with too, because we all have things that don't, that don't set us up for success. We all have those things. Like mine specifically is food. Mine specifically is like last night I watched a horror movie before bed and then I had nightmares. Like things you know that, that contribute to the nightmares, that contribute to feeling sick or contribute to feeling disconnected, like doing those things. I just feel like there's this, that energy is starting to like release. That energy is like being acknowledged right now. You're starting to acknowledge those places in your life, those things that you do in your life, the things that you can control in your waking life that can start to affect the way that you dream, that can start to set yourself I'm going to say it a million more times, by the way, to set yourself up for more success. Like 
in the in the dream world like within your rest cycle and yeah i hope that that resonated with a couple of you anyway moving back into the more collective view of this this spread i i just i see that routine i see you really letting go of these things that are no longer serving you and becoming aware of those things. I feel like there's things that are coming up for you that you've been doing for a long time that you feel you felt this connection to in some way, shape or form. Like you felt very connected to them at some point and you've kind of like kept them along even though like they're not, almost like not wanting to grow with you. Like they're keeping you on this one specific level. They're keeping you on this one specific vibration. Like I just see you letting that go. I just see you, even if it's just like one thing at a time, whether it's like one practice at a time, whether it's one, one physical thing, one mental thing, one emotional thing. I'm, I'm more so feeling like it's like, this is also for, some specific I know I know I was like let's talk about the collective general but now I'm getting another specific thing where it's like where in your life are you feeling like you're almost caging yourself in by holding on to things that were aren't yours anymore like they you connected to them for a long time you connected to them you you grew a lot with them and now it's like they've they've capped like they they can't grow with you anymore. They're almost keeping you like in this cycle of repetitive like energy, this cycle of like that wake up, wash, rinse, repeat, whatever the fuck cycle I'm picking up on. Um, I just see you moving out of that energy of not feeling even connected to your own practice. I'm resonating with the spread really hard because I do that too. Like things I've picked up along the way, even spiritually, um, like throughout my own spiritual journey that I connected to in the beginning. And now I'm like this far into it and I, I still do, but I don't feel as connected to anymore. It's almost like this energy that I'm dragging along, whether rather than it being like in flow and in alignment with me. I almost keep this thing alive that just wants to die. Um, that could also be coming through with that Four of Swords card, like acknowledging that, acknowledging this thing, acknowledging that it took, it had its place in your life. And this is like almost that butterfly coming through and saying like, I acknowledge you. I thank you for where you brought me. I thank you for all of the lessons that came up. I thank you for x y and z and like finally laying those things to rest and moving on and being able to welcome in new things new practices new ways of being um that new vibration like things to match your energy now rather than keeping yourself like in an energy of like always being connected to things that were not even yours to begin with that's like a very specific message i know this reading is kind of all all over the place um at least it feels like it on my side because i feel like pick a, pick a card readings can do that but i hope that you're resonating with some of this and if you're not then feel free to pick another pile but i really do see i see a lot of growth within this spread I see you laying things to rest, whether that's you laying yourself to rest on your own pillow, figuring out what kind of pillow supports you, <laughs> like setting yourself up for a good night of rest, or whether it is acknowledging these things in your life that need to be laid to rest, like these things in your life that are only hindering you. And these things are not I don't think that a lot of these things are bad too. I think that they're just like not for you anymore and letting yourself like move and transition into a new thing, like into having a new tool. This could, especially like if this is a spiritual thing that I'm picking up on for you specifically and a little bit of me too, I'm resonating with it. Um, like letting yourself grow. You don't have to stick with one thing. 
You are fluid. You are able to move and flow into new ways, into new ways of being. You're able to expand your awareness. You're able to connect with new tools, connect with new philosophies, new beliefs. You don't have to stay in the same mindset that you, that maybe is keeping you small without realizing it. But yeah, anyway, moving into, <laughs> I know, I just looked at my phone and it was 2244, of course. I know that I went on a tangent for 20 minutes about these two cards, but I felt like all of that needed to be said. Moving into your courage, your fears, um, not <laughs> your courage, your strengths. This is the Ten of Pentacles. Your courage and your strength lie within your support system. Your strength lies within your stability. It lies within your routine, too. This can be a card of routine, the Ten of Pentacles. Um, so I feel like you're someone who has like strong, strong ties to things and those things can easily turn into routines for you. And sometimes that hinders your growth, like that hinders you from like moving on to the next thing, like being stuck in a routine. But I see you really being like strong in the fact that like you can acknowledge these things now, you can bring awareness to these things and you can create new routines. You can welcome in new, diff new, fresh, different tools, different perspectives, different beliefs, different, different things because you're learning, you're growing, you're always growing, you're always learning. But there are some things that you've been tied to that kind of keep you tied to this vibration that is just not not really holding you like not of service not in alignment with your highest and greatest good anymore like it's just wanting to be let go and like your strength in this is acknowledging like where you can start to develop a new routine start to connect with this could even be um since it's pentacles it's like connecting with new physical tools like new physical people um this could be your strength and connection with ooh, connection with nature like connection with animals um, i love that animals are within all of the minor arcana within the children of lie the tarot it's very mystical and magical and nature-based and beautiful but I just really see that you're strong and like once you make a decision to cut something out like you do it you fall you follow through even if it takes you a minute to even if you're in that readjustment cycle or even just not even a readjustment just this adjustment cycle of like living life outside of that thing that you've been doing for a long time that's kept you in this cage or kept you in that box kept you like stuck like you have this beautiful power within you like you have a str this strong pull towards being able to create new opportunities to create like physical you could also be someone who likes to create like physical tools you could be a builder you could be someone who is very focused on like connection building with people you could be very focused on your growth now like i just really see like you being strong and acknowledging your growth and like wanting to aid and help your growth rather than like hinder your growth and keep you stuck that's a powerful fucking energy to have on your side as your strength to cut through your own bullshit. Like, look at that rhinoceros, like, about to cut through all their own bullshit. <laughs> um, and then moving down into the... Ooh, there's a hair on it. Um, your fears. We have the six of wands in reverse. 
And that is feeling unsuccessful. That is feeling disconnected. That is feeling like all of your efforts aren't, you're not reaping the reward of all of the efforts that you've put in. Which totally ties into what I've fucking been talking about. Like maybe fearing like these new things you want to do or fearing that all of these things you've been tied to for so long that have supported you it's like fearing that next step, fearing being alone and isolated or feeling like you don't necessarily have a connection to anything anymore. I just see like meeting this fear of not being successful like within your new routine or successful within this new journey, successful within cutting something out whether that's like feeling like you maybe that's even a cycle that you get into it's like you cut something out and then you reintroduce it or you cut something out and you're good like you're good for a long time and then it's like okay I'm back <laughs> damn it because I fucking do that um but that's coming through super hard as like a fear or anxiety that's coming up within this spread, within this season of your life where it's like, I don't feel like I can be successful in the things that I commit myself to. Like, I, I don't feel like I can be, com I don't feel like I can be successful within like committing to my own growth, but you absolutely can. Like you, like this is your pillar. This is your fucking strength, the 10 of pen pentacles. And you are totally able to work through the fear of not succeeding, the fear of not being triumphant, the fear of like not being able to break free from the things that are holding you back, from the the things that are only hindering you, the thing like break even breaking free from your nightmares, breaking free from these cycles of pain, breaking free, free from these cycles that just want to keep you in this fucking box that you are completely outgrowing. Um, you're working through that fear. This is a very big fear, but it's not one that you're not able to work through. And gooing, gooing, <laughs> moving into the celebration card. Something to celebrate is the high priestess. Of course it is the gatekeeper to our subconscious mind that even ties into this that dream work thing i was talking about or the priestess of the night the priestess of the unknown what lurks within what lurks in between the lines um to celebrate your intuition this is celebrating your that, that song in your soul, <laughs> per the loon card that I, that I read earlier. Um, but it's celebrating that you have acknowledged that you've been able to feel where you haven't felt connected to some of the things that you've been doing, to feel where you, you need to change, like, to take a step towards self-growth and change like one thing and I feel like that's even talking about again like that that setting yourself up for success within your sleep cycle within like going to bed um the high priestess is just coming through to say like you can absolutely celebrate your intuition like listen to your body listen to what you're feeling above all especially within creating a self-care routine with especially within um, figuring out what is hindering your growth like that could be like feeling like you're disconnected from a tool that you've been using that could literally be tarot that could be crystals that could be the bible that could be if we're talking about spirituality um, and spiritual tools or it could be your phone it could be weed <laughs> it could literally be anything whatever's coming up for you that i'm talking about it's that 
or it's a, all of those things or a combination of those things. Um, but she or they are coming in and saying like, you know what you need. Like, how do you feel when you're not doing those things? Like physically, how do you feel when you're not on your phone all day? How do you feel when you eat things that are raising your vibration rather than lowering it? How do you feel when you do things for yourself with the intention of like bettering yourself or the intention of taking care of yourself versus like doing things that feel good in the moment, but then after the fact you feel sick or after the fact you feel anxious or after the fact you feel disconnected from yourself, you know? And then moving into the last card to contemplate, we have the Emperor, which is such a cool card. It almost looks like he's stabbing something in the ass, <laughs> but that's just me. Um, Probably not. Probably he's not. But the Emperor is a card of power, like contemplating your power, contemplating your ability to cut through your own bullshit, to cut through those things that aren't of service to your highest and greatest good that are in alignment with your highest and greatest good and being able to fi fucking put those things to rest look what what he's doing he's putting something to rest like he's just saying you know what we're done here i'm done with this um and that's just one thing if it can be one thing that's amazing don't where i always fuck myself over is i do all of the things at once and then i fall back into this cycle of like all right, I, I deprived myself of all of the things that I love and now I must introduce one back and then the other and then the other and then I fall into that cycle again of, ooh, my candle went out, um, of repeating and like keeping myself in this cycle. It's like I'm out of it for one minute, I grow and then I take I take one step forward and like 10 steps back. <laughs> um, but that's an energy I'm really picking up with in this spread. And that's something you're like able to cut through and you're able to acknowledge like those things in your life that are only bringing you down or they're only bringing you pain. Um, it's like those things that bring you pleasure for a minute or those things that bring you that instant gratification. But then after the fact, you feel really bad, like emotionally physically, energetically, like those things that fucking lower your vibration. You're being able to call yourself out, take action towards your growth, take action towards your healing, take action towards rejuvenating and restoring your mind, body, and spirit, and having power in that. This is empowerment and this is disempowerment with the six of wands in reverse because the six of wands upright is a card of victory and success and being in a position of power being in a position of like you reaping the reward of what you've been doing and i just feel like whatever cycle you've been in it's like you aren't reaping the reward you're not feeling good you're not feeling connected you're not feeling um rested or rejuvenated also like that fucking mirror within I feel like the mirror is also the thing I'm picking up on too within the Emperor and the Six of Wands in reverse, like being able to pick up on those things that have this like duality to each other within the spread. But also I feel like the mirror is coming up in terms of like that self-care routine I'm talking about. Like I feel like the mirror could be something that is like you taking a look in the mirror there's even that full moon in the background in the background like what's being illuminated um what is coming up for you what are you shining a light on that has been lurking in the shadows um that maybe like takes a different shape at day but then at night it creeps and it crawls up and it like brings you pain or misery or like keeps you further disconnected from yourself or further in that cage um the mirror is just like asking you to come back to yourself like and how can you come back to yourself how can you come more into yourself um what are ways that you can or what are tools or ways or new things that you can do to replace 
the things. Like that is also something that's helped me instead of like depriving myself of the things that I've loved to do. Um, that could be like, <clears throat> let's use that phone thing for example, depriving myself of my phone before bed. Okay, let's let's replace that with something else so that my attention span, like my atten my attentiveness is being catered to, like I need something. Um, so that could be like reading a book, that could be reading tarot, that could be taking a bath, that could be like having your own self-care ritual before bed. Um, and that's just one example. And this isn't all necessarily tied to like what you're doing before bed. This is really a spread like highlighting what what you've been doing that is just keeping you keeping you from growing and keeping you like in that cycle of feeling sick or that cycle of feeling disconnected from yourself um, and furthering like down that path of, of it's like you continuing to do that thing and, and just being it's like you take a step back every time you do it and like you being being able to call yourself on your shit <laughs> and have the power and strength to implement and intuit what you need, implement and take action on what you need and set yourself up for growth and success. That's fucking awesome. So thank you so much for tuning into the spread. I know that it was like 40 minutes long. Didn't intend for that to be that long, but we went, we went to a lot of different places. So if you resonated with this spread, um, let me know. Please leave a comment, like this video. I would love it if you subscribed and shared this video with your friends. And also, I'm sending you so much love. You can do this. I know it's hard to cut things out, but what can you do to replace those things? Like, if you're cutting out something that is I was just talking to someone the other day it's like because we were talking about like cutting out food versus like replacing it with better food so you don't feel deprived like you're always getting you're always feeling nourished um, instead of like punishing yourself um, don't look at this as a punishment look at this as like an opportunity to create like the self-care ritual for yourself that's that's really giving you that rejuvenation like put that intention behind what you're doing and if you're cutting something out replace it with something that much fucking better and that is going to make you feel better so yeah thank you so much if you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one reading with me all of my booking information is on my facebook or instagram and those will be linked in the description but thank you so much i hope that you have a beautiful Samhain whether you're celebrating on your own or celebrating with a select few people. I hope that you have such a beautiful, light-filled holiday. <laughs> Blessed be, I hope that you have a beautiful day. Hello, you chose pile number three. I am using the Osho Zen Tarot deck within this pile. And also, there's this beautiful chunk of labradorite. So, if you chose this pile, go ahead and take a deep breath, and let's dive in. Hello to those who chose pile number three. This is the last last pile that I am reading for all of the or all two of the other readings that I just filmed and tapped into were very long and took me on two two different journeys and I'm excited to embark on this last one also this is pile number three, and I just started filming, and it is 333, just pointing that out there. <laughs> this is a very mystical and magical spread, so 
I'm I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm using the Osho Zen Tarot and a few different Oracle decks. All of the decks that I'm going to be using today are going to be in the description. And yeah, let's let's get into it. If you have not already, let's go ahead and take a deep breath. So, within the placement of life, what to embrace, we have the master in the position of death, what to let go of, we have projections in the position of your courage, your strength, we have morality in the position of your fears, we have thunderbolt. In the position of something to celebrate, we have the creator. And then lastly, the placement of contemplation, something to contemplate. We have the nine of swords, which is sorrow. Um, within the Osho Zen Tarot, it mirrors the Rider Waite system. So going back into this, we have the seven of cups, the queen of cups. We have the tower. This one actually I don't think is in the Rider Waite. I think it's its own thing. Um, and then we have the King of Wands and that Nine of Swords again. And Oracle cards I pulled. We have Trust Your Path. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? We have the Unicorn. I knew when I knew when the Unicorn flew out. It was gonna be a juicy, a juicy time, a juicy spread. Um, it says unicorn, infinite possibilities. You are the sovereign, the sovereign of the seen and unseen worlds. The magic of love surrounds you. Beauty transforms you. Listen to the spirits of light. Abandon the darkness. Go beyond the ordinary and become the, the legendary. We also got whoop, the vision. Yes. I was thinking about this card and then it came out and I was like, just, just confirming that the spread is magical, you know? And then lastly, Oracle card wise, I pulled recognition. Yes. Let's get into it. So in that life position something to embrace right now in your life in this season coming to an end summer's end this thing that is longing to be embraced is the master is the master you have been on a really long journey when i first looked at the spread i heard like shaman i heard healer i heard scholar philosopher so this is a spread for for the people that have been really putting in time and energy into your growth into expanding your knowledge into even like expanding your spiritual knowledge as well by like by these experiences like going on these retreats doing these courses um doing shadow work doing things that are taking you on a deeper 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 like <laughs> when i look at the spread it's not like a, a woo woo you're on this spiritual journey it's like you're on the deep spiritual journey you're like in the throes you're in the depths um and also can pick up that if you're not necessarily feeling connected to your spiritual journey I can acknowledge within the spread like the journey of the scholar the journey that could be you graduating that could be you graduating school just completing a course of some kind you just stepping into a, a new school or a new learning opportunity you creating these opportunities for yourself but there's just so much like celebration to be had within this spread because you've been on this long journey of experiencing so many fucking things like your your tool belt has really expanded you've gone through 
and navigated through darkness, you have like really found your thing. And that's why I'm picking up on like, you're either in school or you're graduating. Like you found this thing, you found the thing that has, that you feel that you are called to do in this life or something. One of the things you're being called to do, one of the things you have been called to learn, um, whether that was your choice or you literally were thrown into it and you don't even know how you got here. Like you are just here right now and you have all of this experience and all of this divine knowledge while also having like this logical knowledge, like making sense of things. Um, I also see this beautiful journey of you being able to mesh like this logical side of you with the spiritual side of you. Like, I almost see you on this journey of like trying to make sense of your spiritual journey and just always being met with like maybe like a closed door in that way. It's like, no, we don't want you to make sense of it. Just experience it. Just fucking experience it. Keep diving deeper. Keep diving deeper. Um, and not necessarily like a closed door. Like, no, you can't know what's really going on. I'm just, I'm, I see like you, you furthering down this rabbit hole like you like there's synchronicities coming up for you along the way there there's there's things that keep you in like going deeper it's not just you fell in and you can't get out it's like you're going in like you've now made it your mission to go deeper you've made it your mission to like uncover things to to have your own understanding and like gain this your own knowledge of things um and then on the other side of that, I'm picking up on like you, you gaining knowledge through others. Like that could be through a mentorship that could be through, um, again, like you being in school. Um, but you're embracing this energy of the master. The master doesn't just come out for anybody. The master doesn't just come out to say like, hi, you're doing a good job, honey. <laughs> the master shows up and is like, you have gone through unexplainable things and you have committed yourself to understanding the unexplainable things, the unexplainable parts of your journey. You've like committed yourself to being able to take the journey. Like that's so beautiful. I see the master is also the shaman, the guru. Um, this is presented by Osho. Um, I know too, whenever this card comes out, one thing I remember, um, with, uh, what was that documentary? I think it was like wild, wild country. Um, I remember Osho took a vow of silence. Um, and I always, that always comes up for me within this card because he took this vow of silence and he, I think it was for like years and years. I could also be wrong, but I see the master as silence of observation of like really mentally, emotionally exploring things within you, like, and being like this observer of your experience, like an observer of your reality rather than like, more rather than like logically <laughs> participating in it, if that makes sense, or like, I just see the master is more of like you're in a position now where you can observe like you've learned so much to this to this point like now it's time for you to step into your your position of, of of acknowledging like all of the knowledge and all of the time you've spent like working towards your goal or learning this new thing um graduating school or um graduating a mentorship or some kind it's just like this energy of embracing like being now you get to observe and like help people along the way when you see fit or like help people along the way people may be like reaching out to you more because it's like they know you you've been in school or they know you've been on this path way longer than them or you're interested or you've like really dived deep into the things that they're just getting into but like the master energy is for something to embrace is is not just one again that just flies out for anybody so this is a beautiful recognition from spirit to say like you have 
you have created this beautiful fucking life for yourself. Like, you've navigated through so much fucking darkness. Like, he has seen some shit. It almost, when I look at the trees behind him, it reminds me of, like, a mushroom trip. The way the trees are distorted, but also, like, rainbow and beautiful. And um, also we have this eclipse behind him. Um, so he's quite literally, like, navigating through the darkness, but also, like, seeing things in his own way because it's dark. But then these trees are coming up as rainbows, um, like, intuiting and exploring and seeing your observation of things and the way they work. If that makes sense. But anyway, moving into the thing to let go of in the position of death, we have the projections card. The Seven of Cups. The card of projections. The card of illusion. The card of... I feel like the Seven of Cups within the spread is something to let go of, like, in this season of your life. Like, this chapter coming to an end. This this thing you are... Also, my candle keeps going out. <laughs> um, we're just gonna leave it out. I'm sorry. Um, but... I feel like this is just you letting go of these projections. You letting go of projecting your own your own things onto people or situations. Like you projecting um, you you meeting people in situations with projections. Like now that you're like in this master energy i honestly hate the term master but you're in this energy of of being a teacher like that's that's the right word um you've you've sat back you've observed and you've listened and instead of reacting and projecting now you're listening and responding or you're listening and you're able to read the room. Like you're able to read between the lines. You're able to listen to the silence. You're able to experience and show up in your relationships differently now. And like, this is just an energy like you're letting go of, 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 um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this and feeling this as like reacting versus responding which is beautiful and you're responding because of all of this knowledge you have now you're responding with this newfound sense of wisdom you're responding with your wisdom you're responding with uh, again ooh, we have these like owls up in here too pointing to wisdom um but you're just responding and recognizing what needs to be said what you feel needs to be said after like actively listening versus you like emotionally responding to someone someone or something and projecting something or projecting your own ideals projecting this this master energy that you have um i, I just really see you letting that shit fall off of you like you're you're moving out of that place of having to explain yourself having to like explain the unexplainable when people like want you to logically explain your spirit spiritual journey to them or come hold their hand um, when they experience something like out of the norm for them i just see you showing up with your wisdom like listening to people holding space for people and also knowing when to be silent um within the like letting things go like knowing when to be silent instead of like reacting or projecting and then we have the queen of swords morality in the position of your courage or your strength which is an amazing thing to have have acquired along this journey to have acquired along this path that you've been on and the queen of swords one of my favorite terms um i heard this through lindsey mack she has a podcast called 
think it's Tarot for the Wild Soul that I used to listen to, um, but she had a whole episode on the Queen of Swords and the Two of Swords, and um, she talked about them being the cards of unfuckwithable boundaries. So that's kind of what I'm seeing within this card, because that doesn't always come up, but I do, I do remember that being like a thing that I that opened my eyes to the queen of swords in a different way. Um, you're able to like cut through bullshit. You're able to have boundaries. Like you, it's almost too, like you've come so far in your journey. Like your energy is so powerful. Your energy is so like, you have such a wise way about you. You have a very, Like you embody this crone energy. That's what I'm picking up on. You just are very wise. Um, you have a very, like you've, you've been through life. You've been through so many fucking experiences and you know when to show up and you know when to not show up. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing that you have acquired along this journey to know, know, I almost just see like you don't, like boundaries aren't really the thing you're working through anymore. Like you've already m mastered or, or been able to accomplish like the boundary thing. And now like your energy, like your boundaries aren't crossed because you have this energy of such like power, <laughs> like power and knowledge and wisdom. It's like people that can also be intimidating too for people. It's like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to talk to them. Like they seem kind of like, they know way, way more than me. I don't want to like seem stupid around them or some shit. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like this is a really awesome thing to embody. And the dark side of that card is like feeling completely closed off. Like the things that you know, and the things that you've learned along the way, it's like you hold them and you don't share them. Um, but I really feel like you do you're able to be in those situations and those encounters and you know when to share your knowledge and you know when to sit back and be an observer. Um, you can feel and intuit and you can feel and navigate those situations in your life where read the, like you can read the room and, and see and read people especially and what they're saying and even like more so what they're not saying <laughs> and you're someone who doesn't have to say a lot and people like still like fucking respect you you just have this like very regal wise energy about you um and moving down into your fears um we have the tower we have thunderbolt and this card specifically like within this deck is really cool um it it comes through to me as an ego death um because this this person the shadow person has like like all of their chakras are on fire and then like these personalities or these people are falling off of them um different parts of their ego but i kind of just see like for those of you that I'm picking up on that crone energy, this could be like fearing like that one, that this giant encounter or like fearing this surprise or fearing some kind of shock to your system um, because it's like if, if you were in that belief that life brings you what you can handle like you're in that master energy it's like what can't you handle it's like avatar last airbender energy it's like you master all of the elements so now what can you handle now there's people maybe showing up in your life that need you to help them through x y and z because you know how to do it and you've been through it or you've learned so much about it and you've been in school and it's like maybe fearing fearing this knowledge and fearing like your own gifts gifts um fearing that 
I just, there's like some kind of demise going on within this fear. It's like maybe even fearing parts of you that are unexplainable. Um, those parts of you, like since this is like a shadow of a person, it could be like the, the fear of those things like coming up to lurk and and fuck with this this title that you have, that master title, like fuck with how far you've come. But, and also I think too, um, within this spread, you're picking up on what a lot of other very like intuitive, empathic, empathetic, empathic people are picking up on, like something's about to happen. Um, energetically, it's almost like we're being prepared for something too. So you're coming into, you've come into this energy of being wise, of harnessing all of the things that you've learned, of being this gentle observer, of knowing when to respond versus react. And it's almost like too, you're picking all, also on things that are happening energetically, but also like this could be a physical fear. Like there's so much going on in the fucking world right now. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty and then if we look back on it, it's like everything has always been uncertain But even more so now things are really coming to the light um, and you're really gonna have to You're gonna be put in a position where you you use the things that you've learned um, and helping other people in some way and Again, that's maybe what I'm also picking up on with like responding with your knowledge versus reacting like to this whatever this thing is coming up this fear that's coming up maybe it's like the fear of the storm um i keep pulling the storm um archetype card and the tower um in terms of like what we're stepping into energetically but and that is scary and that brings fear up and i have to work through that by sitting with myself and knowing that i'll be able to handle whatever comes up um and we can all collectively like lean on each other Especially if it's a, a thing that we're all going through collectively, like how can we help each other um, work through that energy, work through that fear? How can we build each other up? And then we have in the position of like to celebrate, something you can celebrate is the creator, is the king of wands, is your ability to connect with your creativity, with your life force energy. Like there's there's so much life within this card. There's so much life within this card. And this is really just celebrating, especially if you chose the spread and you've been on this like really intense, long spiritual journey, like it's been your whole fucking life. Like you celebrating that you have that relationship with the creator, with source, with God, with whatever you have dedicated your life to really. Um, and also if you're not a spiritual person, also if you're not someone who has been on this spiritual journey per se, I believe that we've all been on a spiritual journey, but then there are those of us who like dedicate their lives and dedicate like very, put a lot of intention behind connecting with their spirituality. Um, I, this is, could also be coming up as like celebrating your creativity, like celebrating, um, your output, celebrating your ability to manifest the things in your life that you really want. Celebrating, um, celebrating the fact that you've created this life for yourself, especially if you've put yourself through school, especially if you've like put yourself and like taking care of yourself and been the one that like creates this thing from the ground up like you've created your empire essentially um like that's something to celebrate and that's so beautiful we have that recognition card and then that vision card like recognizing your vision recognizing that you've been able to bring it forward you've been able to you even carry the wisdom and and grace and confidence and knowledge to bring the thing forward to build your own empire um and lastly we have that contemplation card we have sorrow and if you look at both of these cards there's the duality of them like they're both monks one is in its light 
in his lightness or their lightness and one is in their darkness and in their sorrow um and not to be in this energy isn't to be bad like this isn't a bad energy to be in this isn't an energy that you can necessarily control like for you to acknowledge your spiritual journey especially or your journey up into this point where you've been met with darkness you've been met with sorrow like think about those times like how much you've learned like you've navigated through this so much in your life you've navigated through so much turmoil and especially i am picking up on like turmoil that wasn't even yours like people have come to you and like flock to your life flock to you like on this journey on this path um like this you could be someone who uh, you could be a caretaker you could be someone that works you could be like a death doula you could be someone who just like works in hospice or works in a nursing home or just takes care of people um and just acknowledging and really pointing out how beautiful your energy is and how you're able to sit with people in their sadness like how you're able to sit with yourself in your sadness you're able to like sit with yourself in silence or sit with others in silence and really actively listen like you really are in tune with people and you read people and you're you're able to like understand what they need and if you don't like you're able to ask like how can i help you like how how can i show up for you right now in this time of grief or how can how can what do you need like versus always being like what do i need it's like you being able to ask what does that person need um and then you responding according accordingly to that while also having respect for yourself and respect for your own wisdom <laughs> um, and knowing like that you can express yourself whenever you want but just like being able to read the room read like when someone is in a position that is like very they're in this energy of grief of loss of sorrow of guilt of shame like you're able to show up with your own wisdom and kind of intuit what needs to happen by reading the room but also reading when you need to ask um but yeah, that's fucking, I, I think this was my favorite, um, spread to do, honestly, because I, I think that, oh yeah, we even, we even have that trust your path card. It says, if you knew you'd be supported, what would you do? Um, I just feel like the energy of this spread is like very, very much, you, you've lived a long life even if you're you're not very old like you've lived a long life you you've had so many experiences you've had to navigate so much bullshit while also like navigating a lot of good shit too like you you've just lived a very full life up until this point full of full of many different many different things um and then also i'm picking up on whoever is tapping into this spread um like specifically the the older people like tapping into that crone energy like acknowledging your wisdom acknowledging your grace acknowledging like this long journey you've been on like you've dedicated so much time and energy um especially like nearing the end of this season like summer's end Sawin, like you've dedicated so much time and energy to your path um your connection to spirit your connection to your cause your connection to your school your connection to being a teacher and you're really like embracing this part of you and especially if you're just now stepping into this part of you where you're able to be a teacher or you're a mentor or you're just someone who shares your knowledge with people holds space for people that's so beautiful um and spirit just wants you to know that you are so loved and remember to like take care of yourself especially if you're someone who shows up for other people like how can you show up for yourself or how like know when to ask for help as well especially when you fall into this energy um of being fearful or feeling grief um feeling sad like how can you reach out to your support system um and and like not have everything always fall on you but thank you so much for tuning into this spread thank you for tuning into this reading um i'm so thankful if you would like to leave me a comment and let me know if this resonated with you that would be amazing um if you could like this video and share it if you feel so called um and subscribe to my channel 
I would greatly appreciate you. Um, also, I will leave my social media links in the description. And if you'd like to book a personal reading with me, all of my information is on my Facebook and in my Instagram, or you can just DM me, direct message me um, on Facebook or Instagram. And I'll probably even just leave my email down there as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I hope that you have a beautiful Samhain. I hope that you have a beautiful celebration, whether that's you on your own or you with a select few of people dressing up or carving pumpkins or doing your own ritual or just having a fucking night to yourself and like connecting with spirit, connecting with yourself, connecting with the other side. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I hope that you have a lovely day or night. Blessed be.